Hi. <clears throat> so what happens if you don't uh, enter the details of your property in Dharni? Now, the buzz in the media is that if the property details are not entered in Dharni, then your property doesn't exist. This is the buzz going on around uh, in the media. Therefore, I wanted to make this video. Now, what is Dharni? In a simple language, if you try to understand, Dharni is updating all the property records in the entire state of Telangana online. It is a simple <coughs> way to understand. Now, properties are of two types. Agricultural property and non-agricultural property. Entire properties can be categorized generally into two kinds of properties, agricultural and non-agricultural. You know what is agricultural property and non-agricultural non property means houses, industries, etc. Everything come under non-agricultural properties. Now, <clears throat> the existing law till a recent amendment or uh, the recent new law that came in Telangana was pertaining to the Patadar Pass Books and Record of Rights. So earlier law was in 1971. Now the that law was scrapped and a new law came in the place of that 1971 law. Now what is Record of Rights? Record of Rights is nothing but a register that is in the Hesildar office which informs what are the rights an agricultural land holder has? Because unlike non-agricultural properties, agricultural properties, there will always be a tenant and a owner. And there will be many categories of agricultural properties. There could be government lands, there could be assigned lands, there could be lease lands, there could be tenancy lands. And in Telangana, because of the Nizam heritage, there are huge varieties of lands. So let us not go into that topic. Now, Prior to the new law, which is uh, pertaining to the Dharni, the background of the law is record of uh, rights and Patadar pass books law. So just I will be using the word Dharni itself, okay, Dharni law. Prior to that, the information pertaining to the agricultural properties was already available with the Tehsildar. But the registration used to be with the sub-registrar. And after getting the property registered, that is if any agricultural property is purchased or sold, those documents were submitted to the Tehsildar for mutating the names of the purchasers in the revenue records. So for that, there was an elaborate procedure that was given in the old act pertaining to Patadar Pass Books and ROR Act, which breeded corruption. So now, therefore, Revenue Department got a caption called the Corrupt Department of all the government departments. Therefore, government was very dynamic and tried to bring reforms in the record of rights and Patadar pass books law because based on that pass books itself, uh, even uh, the farmers get the bank loans. So reforms were thought to weed out corruption from the breeding out uh, stage. A Dharani portal was thought, which is a great step which uh, the government needs to be appreciated for bringing Dharani. Now, as per the Dharani and the, as per the new record of rights in Padar Pass Books law, the registration of the agricultural properties will be before the Tehsildar. Earlier, it was before the sub-registrar. Now, it will be before the Tehsildar. Uh, so there is some processor upon appointment and the mutation will be done on the spot. So, that is the new Dharani law. So, based on this Dharani law, government got an idea even to update the non-agricultural lands also. There, therefore, they made amendments in the Municipal Law, GHMC Law, Greater Hyderabad Municipal Corporation Act Law and the Panchayati Raj Law also. And amendments are also made. Now, amendments are made pertaining to the mutation. <laughs> that is to say, the sub-registrar will mutate. Earlier mutation was with the corporation, Municipal Corporation. Simple language I would uh, explain once again. Registration would happen before the sub-registrar. After that, if it is an agricultural property, the registered document was sub submitted to the Tehsildar and Tehsildar follows a processor and mutates the name, that is, changes the name of the seller 
and replaces with it, it with the name of the purchaser. There is a procedure pertaining to the agricultural lands. Now, if it is a non-agricultural land, after getting the property registered in the subregistrar's office, the property was brought to the municipal corporation or if it is a gram panchayat, gram panchayat. If it is a house in the gram panchayat, gram panchayat mutates. So, there was some mutation done. Now, with the Dharni law, subregistrar mutates the non-agricultural properties and Tehsildar mutates the agricultural properties. Now, registration is also done by the Tehsildar. Mutation will also be done by the Tehsildar. So, this is the simple way to understand Dharni law. Now, if this is the law that came into Telangana, and there are some restrictions pertaining to mutation. For example, if it is a non-agricultural land, if you don't pay the property tax up to date, if you don't pay the water bill up to date, if you don't pay the current bill up to date, sub-registrar will not mutate or sub-registrar will not register. Now, whether sub-registrar cannot register if the citizens do not pay property tax or citizens do not pay water bill or the current bill, it is a different question. Let us not go into that question. Because if somebody doesn't pay water, water bill, disconnect their water connection. Why should property be stopped from registration? In the same way, if somebody doesn't pay current bill, disconnect their current connection. And if somebody doesn't pay property tax, then uh, release a warrant for uh, attachment of movable properties in the house. That is a law existing right now. Now, government want to tag this with registration because people bet get panicky if registration is tagged with these bills because many people are not prompt in paying the bills and government want to tag it with registration fine how far it is tagged it is possible to tag with the registration how far it is constitutionally valid is a different question let us not go into that question right now now a survey is going on in telangana in the entire state of telangana and before launching the dharni portal that if you don't update your properties in the dharni portal your property will not will be treated as non-existential now this is the joke i don't know why a government is uh, actively collecting data if government wants to use this data pertaining to cast uh, other number etc etc property details etc for some other extraneous purposes only government will can know but if if the news that if the details of the property is not entered in the Dharani portal, the property doesn't exist is a joke. Because title doesn't come just because your property is in the Dharani or title doesn't vanish if your property is not in Dharani. It is an entirely different concept of the title. Title comes through sale deed, title comes by way of paying consideration, title comes by taking possession of the property. Title comes by enjoying the property, title comes by transferring the property, heritable, ownership. There are there is a huge concept. Just because your property doesn't list out in the Dharani portal or just because your property lists in the Dharani portal, your property does not exist or your property does exist respectively, then it is a joke. Now what government is doing, if government want to collect information for the larger public interest, it, it's a welcome step. Say it openly. You already have the all the property details. What is the need to collect it separately? Tagging with other details of caste and etc. Only government should know and citizens should think about it. Now there is nothing to worry if your property is not in Dharani, it can be updated. But basically the concept of Dharani is to ease in the process of mutation. Because the property details are already available with the government, they are being digitalized. And in the process of digitalization, mutation is also being tagged along with digitalization. That itself is a concept of Dharani. So not giving the property details or not updating the Dharani, uh, not updating your property in the Dharani is irrelevant to existence of your property is my legal advice. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you have any doubts, kindly comment.